Welcome to Las Vegas. It is time for another final table of the 2024 PGT kickoff. Event number four is a $5,000 buy-in no limit hold'em event, and we have a stacked final table for you yet again. It's going to be a fun one. It might be a fast one because David Coleman is once again at the final table. Let this settle in for a second. Back to back to back to back final tables. Yes, that is four in a row for David Coleman. You'll see him there in the two seat next to Justin Bonomo. My name is Rem Gorinkama, Donnie Peters alongside me, and these are the players at today's final table. Mid stakes crusher Jeremy Becker, high stakes crusher Justin Bonomo, the Russians, Viktor Ustamov and Nikita Kalinin, and Victoria Lifshitz. Those are the six that made the money late last night. Bit of a smaller feel in today's event. Perhaps players taking a day off on Sunday to watch some football, get a day of rest, because today the 10K final event of the series kicks off inside the studio. Here's the payouts. $73,000 up top, $12,000 guaranteed for the final six. And we had 41 entries in this 5K event. Donnie, today the 10K gets uh, kicked off in the studio. <coughs> Daniel Negreanu already tweeted that, it's, that he's on his way. A little bit of a downturn as far as turnout for this event, but I think... The 10K today is going to be a big one. Yeah, I would agree. I think the weekend, specifically Sunday, just kind of ate into the field size a little bit. But I would expect things to tick right back up for this 10K. Of course, double points are up for grabs throughout this kickoff series. So the 10K is going to be quite valuable overall for the PGT leaderboard. Double points up for grabs in our PGT kickoff. So that 10K is going to be extremely valuable. We calculated, did some math, and basically 1,200 points would be right around the bubble for the million-dollar free roll at the end of the year, same as this past season. And there could be upwards oh. of 400 points up for grabs in the 10K that closes out this series. Uh, there he is on the right-hand side, Donnie. Put into context how insane this run has been by David Coleman. I mean, the, the, the guy's crushing. You know, he's, he's been around for a little while now. David Coleman, you know, I would say quite yeah. young uh, by poker standards, 30 years suck, old. Suck you know. on me. It's the only hand that makes sense. To yeah. But everything is coming up. Coleman, Scary. as I don't of want late. to play post flop with Justin Bonomo. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bonomo uh, back at the final table in the studio. Bonomo sort of uh, in this mode of uh, head down grinding. Every single day he shows up played the last chance of course uh, missed out on the championship which in some way to me is sort of like a miracle with how <laughs> how good he is how much he plays yeah. how many how many runs he's made uh, and he's starting off the year by by chasing points yeah maybe maybe he viewed last year and missing the top 40 missing out on the PGT championship million dollar free roll as a volume thing you know we didn't see him in as many events as you might have guessed. You know, he mostly came out for kind of the higher buy-in stuff. And as the season went on, his volume picked up. But maybe he says, you know, this year, let's start things off with this series. I'm in Vegas. It is double points up for grabs. So let's get some of that early volume out of the way. Hopefully I can net myself some points, give myself a cushion for the rest of the season. Yeah, Bonomo made the final table of the last chance event one. That it was won by Daniel Negreanu, which was an epic final table. Negreanu ultimately ended up heads up against Daniel Smilkovic, who ended up winning the PGT Championship. So lots of links and connections to be made there. If you are interested in following along with our season-long <coughs> PGT leaderboard, check out pgt.com slash leaderboard. And uh, we already have this year's standings on there. And uh, scrolling down the list, I already see 30 players with points collected. And, of course, David Coleman with an early lead, Donnie. Coleman, aside from this final table, which he's going to get points in, already up to 442 points, which is quite insane. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just an incredible start to the season. If, if that cutoff line to get in the championship is, is right around 1,200 points again, he's a third of the way there. And, and we're, what, five days into the season? He already said on yesterday's stream that, you know, he plays PLO. It's not his best game, but he does play it, and he's definitely going to be playing the PGT PLO series now because, you know, th the points that he's earned here have given him that boost that's going to kind of propel him to want to play more throughout the year to really lock himself up for that championship, maybe make a run at PGT Player of the Year. That comes with the $50,000 bonus won by Ike Haxton last year, so... 
I would expect uh, David Coleman to be a household name here on the PGT in all of these series. Bottom of here with the raise to 80K. Viktor Ustamov calls from the big blind. Jack, 8-7, two diamonds on the flop. I'd we'll like to see Bonomo continue here, I'm assuming. Yeah, he might check back here. I mean, this is somewhat of a tricky board against the big blind range. I think you can kind of go bet. You can kind of go check. Depends. Mix a little bit. He does check back. Now we'll see if that opens the door for Ustamov here. He's an extremely experienced player in his own right. Comes from the online world. Ten seconds. The Russians well rep represented at this series. I guess they made one big trip out of it, playing the last chance, the kickoff. Might be some more events around town. By the way, speaking of events around town, shout out to Jeff Platt, our friend, and of course, the, one of the voices of Poker Go, finishing third last night in one of the win events for $53,000, Donnie. Yeah, an $1,100 win tournament. They could have a 400K guarantee. Really well done from Jeff. Too bad he couldn't close it out, but hey, 53K score. Nice little boost to the bankroll. Both Pass players continue yeah. to check this one down. <laughs> I was going to say, passive uh, hand developing here as Bonomo fires on the river after hitting an ace. Best case scenario for Bonomo as Ustamov with an ace as well pays him off. Bonomo chipping up here. Uh, Donnie, quite a shallow final table compared to the last few we've seen. Yeah, I mean, n not as many entries in this event, so less chips to go around overall <coughs> short stack right now is Victoria Lifshitz we have seen her at a final table already the co-founder of Octopi Poker who is partnered with Poker Go you guys can check them out octopipoker.ai get in on their beta platform to sign up I believe it's free to start for a little while, so if you want to check out some of those tools, I would encourage you to do so. Victoria co-founded that alongside Andrew Lucky Chewy Lichtenberger. He's been out here battling as well, but uh, hasn't hasn't made one of these final tables yet. He's cashed maybe once or twice, but Lucky Chewy, another player who missed out on the BGT Championship last year by, I mean, like 18 points, something something like that. You know, he was he was right there battling till the end in the PGT last chance series. Nice hand here for Coleman, King Queen of Spades. Coleman of course part of one of the most epic hands we've ever seen last night versus Kristen 80. Foxen and Justin Young. 80. A three way all in to end the tournament. We posted the clip on our YouTube channel. It's also on Twitter. Please go watch that if you haven't already. Absolutely insane. Kings versus Queens versus Eights. Spoiler alert, the eight hit on the flop, and Justin Young busted two players on the final hand. Young, by the way, who was the short stack for the majority of the final table, perhaps inspiring Victoria Lifshitz to uh, also go on a similar run as we see <coughs> Kalinin here move all in. A call. Ace check off. And Coleman makes the call. All right, we're going to have our first all in showdown. Nikita Kalinin from Russia at risk with. Ace jack offsuit. 600. 600. By 595. Right? Oh, wow. I'm embarrassed I even asked for a count. Calling it all in for a little less than 15 bigs. Coleman looking to reduce the field to five. Here comes the flop. Ace, six, five. Terrific flop for Kalinin, who is well on his way to a double up. Coleman can afford to spend the chips, but he will relinquish his chip lead if he doesn't catch up here. Turn card is the Queen of Diamonds. It's never easy. Four outs now for Coleman, of course. Those diamonds are dead. We've seen Coleman get plenty so lucky before throughout the kickoff series. <laughs> do it again. We will see. 
River card coming. It is the six of spades. Oh, Kalinin <laughs> with the double up. Too much, right? Wow. Gamble too much. <laughs> Stacks are tight and close together. Kalinin on 1.3 million now, our chip leader. And look at that. Becker, think, Coleman, and Bonomo. Basically tied for second place. 595? Okay, so it was 600. I knew it was 600. With Ustamov and Lifshitz as the short stacks. Yeah, yeah. She gave you five hundred. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. Okay. Just getting the count correct there. Leave a mark. Karma for slow rolling in. I really did. <laughs> If you're just tuning in on YouTube, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel. It's very much appreciated. It's all we ask for during this kickoff series. The likes help spread the word. And if you're not yet a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please do so. We are posting daily content, sometimes multiple things a day, since there is so much going on in the world of poker. Donnie, just outside the world of poker, but very closely related to it. We got more NFL playoff action, and I was just wanted to check in with you on how uh, how the betting action has been this past weekend and, and what you're looking at today. Betting action's been good. Um, I've won every bet but one so far. Uh, had, uh, had Green Bay plus seven yesterday. I also, I think I mentioned yesterday that I took Green Bay money line out of a parlay that I had, but I had them on the side Green Bay money line, a little bit of a taste. Oh. So that was, uh, that was good for me. Checking out this hand right here. I'm gonna be on the Bills and the Bucks today in a teaser action. Oh, I, I just, it's one of those bets where like I don't really feel confident in either side too much, but I want to have action because you know why? Why not just have some action, right? Just put a little taste in there. So that's what I'm on. Lips is here, all in for just 200k. Killing it in the small blind. Of course, not going anywhere, but. I think he's just contemplating what to exactly do with this. Easy fold for Becker in the big blind. And Lifshitz all in here versus Kalinin. Dominated ace seven versus ace jack. Lifshitz made the event number two final table of this series, but she busted first at that final table. We'll see if she can fade that same fate oh, here. I'm due. <laughs> you are due, Victoria. Let's go. <laughs> Believe. You gotta believe. Yeah, I don't think she's been too fortunate in showdowns here on the live stream. So let's see if Victoria can get lucky here. Mm. I mean That's believing a decent <laughs> start. <laughs> believing has gotten her to the point now where she has a chip lead. And look at the odds here. Forty five percent to win this, a seven or a diamond would give her a double up. Can she let me have one? <laughs> Turn card. Nine of clubs. The same amount of outs. Equity does go down a bit as we are one card away. If she's looking for a diamond or a seven or else she will be eliminated. It's a diamond on the river and a little fist bump to celebrate here as she finds a way to stay alive. Yeah, it must feel good. Finally winning one of those for Victoria Lipschitz. And if you're calling in, you know, Victoria didn't have too many chips, so not the biggest blow to your stack. Kalinin's still right there among the top stacks. One one. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting to see if I'm gonna get a possibly free rolled by the casino. Oh. So I I put in <coughs> Bills Steelers over 33 and a half like days ago because I was like even bad weather I mean c come on Josh Allen throws a freaking missile like let's go like, they can score some points the Steelers might be able to add some it's, th it's 33 and a half it's still in my account so I feel good right but under the gun is not I tried to look up the 90? house rules it was a disaster <laughs> so, and now the line is like 39 so I'm like are they just going to avoid the bet <laughs> but you made the bet 
But it yeah, was for the yeah. different date. Yeah, different day. So I don't know. All these places have different house rules. I feel like they all try and get you out of, out of different it's things, you know. So are they going to wait and, like, go from that? if it goes under, it's it counts and they take my money. But if it goes over, they just avoid it and it. point to some sort of house rule that. that I just couldn't find because I'm not reading through 3,000 words of house rules. Like I mean, So <laughs> I, I got screwed on that once. Um, this is a long time ago, back when I was still living in the Netherlands. I bet on this soccer player to score over, uh, or, excuse me, to score under nine goals for the yeah, season. Okay. So it was a, it was a preseason future. Good. Two days before the season started, this guy got sold to a different team. So he couldn't score because he was not in the league anymore. My <laughs> at, the, at, the very, at the very end of the season, I get a notification bet was voided You're asking him at the end of the season it. they <laughs> held on to my money for an the entire season are about to fly yeah, just, just <laughs> <laughs> sports books these days are not <laughs> kind they're trying to just <laughs> grind you down donnie they are and and if you you start grinding it up they just say oh you can only bet 20 dollars <laughs> right exactly <laughs> that's why you just got to play poker you can whatever money you have honestly listen that's why i left the poker world and went to work in the sports betting world for for two years and and i honestly had enough of it and i was like i want to go back to poker because i just kind of saw where the industry was going i thought um just just developing da down a pathway that I, I didn't necessarily agree with so i said you know i'm just gonna go back to poker not that i agree with everything that happens in the poker industry but you know i feel like it's a little bit more <laughs> I guess customer friendly, the customer being the players, than the current sports betting industry is. So that said, sports books are still going to get my money because you know why not? Got to ha got to have something on the games. Bottom all here, calling from the small line with sixes. Coleman attacking. All in. All in. Wow! Look at this, Bonimo with the limp shove. Gets it done without showdown. That is some power poker from Justin Bonomo. Am I moving? Am I moving? More to the right. with us in the chat let us know if you got any action on the side perhaps any fun sweats today we'd love to sweat along with your action as well Don, you mentioned to me that Coleman was on quite the hot streak last night as well. <laughs> it was quite a few hands going his way. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the live Colin. reporting over on right. PGT.com, I, I saw at least twice. Oh, Lifshitz is okay. going to call this here, so we'll get back to that in one second. Lifshitz was dominated a few hands ago when she was all in. This time, she is the mm. holder of the big cards. Lifshitz trying to double up a second time, and really get to be in contention here if her ace jack yeah. holds up. Yeah, she'll be right in it. Put out the minimum. She gets this double up. Never works well when you put out the full amount. Queen, 8-3. That is disaster for Victoria Lifshitz. Oh, you perhaps a little... Poker Gods payback for the fact that she was able to spike one on the ten. previous hand. Give her a ten. No, Turn not is anymore. The nine of clubs. <laughs> now which is with a jack or a ten as outs to survive. If she misses, she will be our sixth place finisher. Rip a card. Is the deuce of diamonds. No luck for Victoria Lifshitz, who is unfortunate to bust out here in sixth place. Another final table run. Well done by her. She's going to collect 12,300. And I can only imagine we'll see her in the 10K today looking to gather some more points. 
And uh, Coleman, meanwhile, back to what he's been up to, busting players, raking in chips, up to 1.5 million. He is our current chip leader as Ustamov, the short stack now down to below 10 big blinds. And not the result uh, Livshitz was looking for, of course, but hey, she's now cashed in two of these events, seventh and sixth place in both of those. So she's got 61 points to start off her 2024 PGT campaign. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's double what you would get for cashing normally. So, you know, it feels like it's got to be a pretty good start. That's good. The hot run continues for Coleman. Yeah, I mean, last night, uh, at least twice in the live reporting, I saw him pick up aces. I believe once it was against ace-queen, once it was against ace-king. So, you know, getting aces when it matters. They're holding when it matters. Your opponent has a very good hand to go with you, you know. So things are just coming up, David Coleman. And they've been that way for, what, back to November? Well, you know, when he made the final table of the NAPT main event, the NAPT's return to Las Vegas over at Resorts World. Coleman made the final table there. I think entering yesterday's final table, he had won more than $670,000 in, in the last two and a half months. Included in that was uh, four six-figure scores. So you add in yesterday's cash, you add in this cash, he's up over 700 k Wow. Sometimes it's just one of those things where... You just play, 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 and you know variance. You know you're you're up some months, you're down some months overall, and, and sometimes you go through extremely long stretches. Anyone who grinds poker tournaments, or just grinds poker in general, knows about those long stretches that can happen. But then once in a while, you hit the sun run, right? <laughs> I mean, the I guess the only thing that David Coleman might want to complain about right now is that these are five Ks and not ten Ks, right? right? Like that's the only thing. That said, they are worth double points, so. He is cruising along at the top of the PGT leaderboard. I think he mentioned that after this series, he's going to dip down to Florida for Did Lucky he? Hearts. And then if that doesn't go well, he might fly up to Borgata for the series that they go on there. And then after that, I think he's going to be back out here for the 2024 Poker Go Cup that kicks off towards the end of January. And I would expect him to be in all of those events from start to finish. And with the way he's running, I mean, he'll probably be in contention to win the cup. Yeah. Coleman raises to 80K. <coughs> Kalinin in the big blind calls with 9-7 offsuit. Little shout out here to people over on Poker Go, the B52 Bomber. I see you, Brian. What's up, my man? Jungle Cream, also out there. Got a couple of guest viewers as well. Know that you can change your Poker Go chat username. Click on your little profile icon in the upper right of your screen on desktop. Can't do it on mobile, only on desktop. Uh, you can click edit and you can add or update your username. Quiet at today's final table so far. Yesterday we had a, a chatty and a, and a lively one. I guess that's what happens when you bring two good friends, Justin Young, Dylan Di Stefano, <laughs> to the table. A secret handshake going on. They had a little, <laughs> a little, a finger tingle. I mean, I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> the fir my first thought was like, they could be in like poker's version of stepbrothers. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Coleman Ace Queen offsuit, gonna attack again. Obviously, Ustamov on just six bigs. I mean, he's had decent hands, you know, to to battle with here at this final table. Could see some action here from Jeremy Becker, who hasn't been involved at all at 
yet at this final table. What kind of sunglasses are those? I know you know. Are those the blenders? I believe they are the blenders, yeah. You gotta have good shades when you play poker. Those are those are all class. Love the way love the way they look. By the way, Donnie, Ustamov, next time we get a shot of him, reminds me of the Swedish player Per Lind. Okay. Remember yeah. Per Lind? Yeah, where's he at these days? He has not cashed the poker tournament in many years. Three bet here from Becker, taking that King Little. Players these days like to take this type of holding and put it into that hand class of a three bet. You know, the king does well blocking some of the bigger premiums that your opponent can have. Of course, we can see Coleman has a nice looking ace queen. I, I would expect him to put this in. Becker perhaps attacking, hoping to get some extra respect with Ustamov being as short as he is. Yeah, it's also, you know, Be Becker hasn't played a hand yet. Maybe there's some of that at play too, like, you know. All in. There it is. There's the jam. Expect Becker quickly puts that one in the muck. This is the type of this is the type of fold where you crack a smile and you're like, ah, you know, I gave it, I gave it a shot. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, Coleman, meanwhile, started as chip leader, lost an all in, won an all in. Yeah, and he's back on top. And cruising too. Yeah, back up on top by quite a margin, almost double second place. That's Justin Bonomo. It is David Coleman's show, and we're all just living in it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. One of the most dominant performances we've seen in quite a while. If you've not watched our previous kickoff final tables, Coleman is at his fourth straight final table here. Four events, four final tables, and the early front runner in on on our PGT leaderboard. And what and what's also you know crazy when when you say that out loud is that making every final table means that he's late jumping into the next event, <laughs> right? So yep. he comes in a little bit shorter. Yeah, it's true. And he's still making it happen. <laughs> the funny, the funny thing was yesterday. I was, uh, I was, I drove home, eighty, and I checked our live reporting. So you know, could not have been more than two hours after we finished our final table. And Coleman was chip leader, and I'm <laughs> like, this guy literally just busted this tournament in second place, and he's already chip leader again. It's so impressive. Um, by the way, we have live reporting of all our owned and operated PGT events, so. Make sure that you keep track of those. It's also interesting if you're an opponent of Coleman at, at these final tables. I mean, you know he's obviously running very well, yes. But with that comes a lot of confidence in poker. So it, it, it's got to put a, a little bit of fear in, into your opponents, e even just in the sense that, you know, can can we beat this guy right now? Like, can, like <laughs> he just always has it. He's feeling good. He's making the best plays. So he's going to be a lot to handle, especially with a chip lead like he has right now. Bonomo elects to defend the king queen off here from the big blind. These are the two biggest stacks currently with five left. Bonomo checks the eight eight deuce flop, and Coleman's going to come with a bet here. 55k. So 25% pot from him. Bonomo does have the king of spades in his hand. Yeah. He's going to come along here. Five on the turn, so adds a wheel draw for Coleman and the way he's going. It'll probably be a three on the river, of course, but <laughs> we'll see if we get there. I do like the fact that every final table creates a new dynamic. The theme yesterday was three bet, four bet, lots of action. We saw tons of big pairs also, which of course helps, but still aggressive vibes at the table. For now, what I'm sensing at this final table is that everyone is sort of watching Coleman and he is really taking the reins and trying to dominate. And you know, fortunately, unfortunately for him, he misses his straight draw on the river, but still as high as best. Donnie, could we ever expect a bluff here from Bonomo, or is that simply not a not not an advised approach? No, I think I think it'd be fine for Bonomo to take initiative here and, and come out firing. You know, you can also think that your king high is going to be good. Kind of go either way there. Ace high ends up being good, and Pullman checks back and rakes in this pot, and might seem insignificant, but it's actually a pretty big deal. He continues to, you know, increase his chip lead. 
I mean, you mentioned it earlier, there's not a ton of chips in play at this final table, only 100 big blinds total. So, you know, even if you win five, six of them at that pot, that's a significant amount, right? Also, when you factor in the player that he's against in that hand, Bonomo being second in chips, he can spread that gap out a little bit more. <coughs> Coleman now in a position where, you know, I, I would expect him, given the stack size that that man right there, Ustamov has, being very short on five and a half big blinds that he can really put the other players in a bit of the ICM cage. Just open up a lot, be aggressive, really leverage him. And just as I say that, Ustamov picks up ace-queen off here, so <laughs> we'll see if he can get a double up here because this money's going in. Pair Lind, can you see it? Yes, I can, I can see it for sure. <laughs> yeah, Ustamov on just five big blinds. He's going to need lots of help. Victoria Lifshitz was well on her way to a nice run-up, but that was halted by David Coleman when he flop. got lucky with ace three. So I, okay. So I'll count again when it's thirty forty. No, no, no. Ustamov Nine. verifying his shot clock and then moves all in with ace queen. Yeah, oh, you two hundred and seventy five seconds. It was oh, yeah. tw twenty. That's why. Okay. You said tw uh, 10 seconds. Second ten seconds. is 10. When we okay. build time out, and I'm going to count it again for you. I think I owe you one for when Jeremy was big blind. You should ask production. I think I owe you one. We know nothing. Just confirm with production. <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, we're just here to talk shit. So so maybe the guys in the back know something, but we, we don't know anything. Like a confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. Mito Man says, well, I do watch the recording. I cannot watch the whole show live. It will last till 3 a.m. and work the next day, no chance. See, that's the beauty of these live streams. You can watch them <coughs> on demand as well whenever you get a chance. Just uh, tap into the archives. We have so much live poker on our channel. It's going to be our biggest year yet as far as live streams and clips and shorts. And, and, and man, we're already talking about WSOP again. It, there's so much going on. It's kind of hard to keep track sometimes. And, and Donnie, by the way, tomorrow is our final event of our kickoff series, but we're only going to get a few days off before the cup starts. Yeah, Poker Go Cup 2024 edition, the fourth ever Poker Go Cup, kicks off on January 25th for a stream on the 26th. 300. 300 we'll have live streams of every single final table from January 26th through February 3rd. I also heard they're bringing in some professionals as... Jeff and Brent will be on the call for the events on Poker Go. And you and I will be back in our dark, cold cave, Donnie. Oh, yeah. In the closet, baby. Bonmo wins this one. Raise on the button with a couple of ducks. Speaking of Brent Hanks, his favorite hand. Takes this one down. Bonmo back up over a million. Boost him off the short stack here. Six big blinds for him. <coughs> Becker. About double that, a little bit more. Just under 700k for Jeremy Becker. Virage says, is Coleman guaranteed at the final table? Well, at this point, he might as well be because <laughs> yeah. he's made four straight final tables. No, I and I mean, I'm just going to probably bet on the fact that he'll be there again for this 10k. I got to put the hand. Bonomo has got some breakfast coming. That sounds great. Ace Jack. He's got a nice looking Ace Jack. Yeah. Suited. One of those spots where, you know, a player gets delivered his food or a drink, but <laughs> he can't handle that business because he's got a hand. So is, you know, is that a bit of a tell? <laughs> it's, it's, always, it's always funny when you have to do a transaction of some kind while you get dealt a big hand. Uh, it's almost like a giveaway that your hand is really strong because if the hand wasn't that strong, you're just like, oh, let me just quickly fold and, and, and pay the yep. server or, or do whatever. So uh, Bonham will probably get credit for at least ace-queen here um, due to the fact that he's uh, getting his breakfast settled. I'll never forget. One, one, of the, one of the first events I ever covered was a WSOP circuit main event at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Justin Bonomo was at the final table. I want to say he ultimately finished in like second place. But anyway, he's at the final table. And I believe Men the Master <laughs> went all in. And 
action was on Justin Bonham, and I think he was last. He was closing the action, but somebody at the table had to go to the bathroom. Might have been Matt Graham. Might have been somebody else. Um, basically, Justin stalled. Oh my God! Waiting for the person to go to the bathroom and come back. You know, person ran to the bathroom. It was like it's like right outside the room, right around the corner. You know, it took like a minute or two. You know, not that long, but <laughs> then. The player comes back, and Justin goes, you don't know how good of a friend I am. Call aces. Oh, my God. <laughs> no way. And then I think, if I remember correctly, Men the Master spiked with the king with the king queen. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> Speaking of Caesar's Palace, I brings back a memory and I think I've I think I've told this story before on stream but I'll, I'll tell it again for those that are new my first ever time in Las Vegas was 2009 I was 21 years old I played a $200 Caesars event in, in their old poker room and it was like one of those daily tournaments but it had like a pretty big first prize it was like part of their series or something I want to say it was like 30,000 up top or something massive massive all like an all-day event like you know, sort of how the Venetian deep stacks became huge after that. Caesars had those uh, series events as well. I was going deep in the event. I was super nervous. I was 21 years old, and I busted just before the money. But I was so excited about the tournament that I wanted to see, you know, how it would play out because, you know, I was, I'd never really gone deep in a tournament before, as Coleman, by the way, finds pocket kings. To quickly finish my story, there was four tables left. They reached the money, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to quickly grab some lunch. So I ran to the food court I grabbed myself a sandwich I came back and there was nobody left <laughs> there was th like the tournament was gone the, the tournament was done there was nobody left in the tournament so I go up to a tournament reporter or uh, excuse me to a tournament supervisor and I go hey wh what happened to the tournament are they on break and he goes no they made a deal I'm like what do you mean they made a deal yeah final 27 even chop they did an even chop Donnie with three tables remaining I mean that's just wild imagine agreeing to that Absolutely hysterical. Uh, Coleman picks it up with Kings here. Mm -hmm. No stress oh. for him. Oh, Barmo on the bacon. Barmo on the bacon. Yeah. That good. I'm sure Joseph Moletta is making a gif out of this one. We've had some good. We've had some good Bad moments. For you that I got my food. <laughs> <laughs> I like the potato a lot there. Mm. That's the best part. Looks good. By the way, poker players truly spoiled here at the studio like when it comes to food. Amazing. So many options to order from those great restaurants at Aria. Becker, ace four spades on the button here. Yeah, Bonham won that circuit event. Oh, he did. Yep. Yep. And it was Fine. it was Matt Graham that went uh, to the bathroom. <laughs> Becker moves all in from the button. On the board. Gets a couple of folds and takes down his first hand of this final table. Stacks are very shallow, so lots of tightrope dancing required here to eke out a nice score. Unless your name, of course, is. David Coleman and you're just cruising sitting on 2.3 million chips. Ustamov, five bigs. Becker, 13 bigs. Kalinin, 15 bigs. Only a matter of time before we see a string of big all-ins. Uh, Tragic in the chat says, and you lost to those guys? Yes, I did. I lost <laughs> to those guys. That's how bad I was. Shout out to Variants. Shout out to Poker Tournaments. Speaking of breakfast, Donnie, the breakfast burrito, in whatever in whatever configuration, has to be undefeated as the top yeah. tier breakfast food. Yeah, I mean it's just it's elite. <laughs> it's also kind of hard to screw up in a way, like right? you know, like yes. I don't. And, think and I, I don't think I've ever had a bad breakfast burrito. I mean, there's certainly been times I've looked at a menu and 
seen the items in a breakfast burrito and been like, I might not like that, and I've passed. So I, I don't know if I would it would have said that it would have been bad, but right. I think every time I've ordered a breakfast burrito, it's been good because honestly, how can you screw up a breakfast burrito? But it's, it's also the <laughs> perfect ve- the perfect vehicle for food. Like it's handheld, it's not messy unless mm-hmm. you, unless you screw it up. And it's just good on the fly, too. You know, like even seeing Bonomo here eat his piece of bacon, have his potatoes and his eggs on the side. Give me a breakfast burrito. Like, I'll just keep it in the wrapper. You put that whole, his whole thing in a, in yeah, a burrito. Could, could be, the whole thing in a burrito. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, like, I've had, like, I've had breakfast burritos with, like, you know, spinach and egg whites. You can make all sorts of combinations. Massive flop here for Ustamov. Defends extremely short out of the big blind and just flops trips. And he's going to get a double up here unless his board runs out crazy in Bonomo's favor. Wow. Mm. Defending the king four off from the big line on such a short stack, Tony. How do you feel about that? I I think it's fine. Um, You know, I think a lot of players might think, oh, I'm in the big blind. I don't have anything. Let me just fold. But I think you can defend pretty wide when you get super short like this. You know, just take a shot. Worst case, I mean, you might have to check fold the flop. Big deal. But you were already super short anyway, so. Bonomo does pick up an eight here on the turn, so he needs one of those remaining two eights here on the river to knock out Ustamov. Victor Ustamov on his way to a much needed double up. Let's see the river card. Ooh, close. Seven of hearts, not going to change the see outcome it. here. <laughs> Ustamov doubles to 525. Bonmo takes a little hit. And, Johnny, why did Coleman say that? Love to see it. Well, I mean, now Bonmo is shorter. Ustamov doubled, yes, but he's still on 10 and a half big blinds. I mean, it just puts Coleman in an even better position, right? He can just continue to leverage, leverage, leverage his opponents. They're going to be extremely handcuffed. You know, Bonmo gets even more handcuffed if he wasn't already. Coleman, Donnie, still raising here with 9-6 offsuit. Aren't you taking a bit of a risk with how short the rest behind you is? I mean, they have to have hands, though. You know, I mean, Ustamov, yes, he found the ace-queen right here, but I think in this position, I mean, Coleman's probably opening almost any two. You know, he's probably approaching 65 70% of his range opening here on the button, especially after Ustamov doubled, right? I mean, he's... Now he's in, in a spot where he can possibly try and maneuver his way to a ladder. <laughs> Coleman on 43 bigs, the rest between 16 and 13. The perfect spot, of course, for Coleman to continue applying that pressure. And the rest of the players are sort of in a staring contest. Like, are you, are you going to do it? Yeah. Are, are you going to go for it? Jack 10 off here. I, I would expect Coleman to open once again. All in. And there's that pressure. <laughs> I mean, I how many times is Ustamov going to get ace queen? <laughs> yeah, Ustamov in a great situation to. I was going to say, Col- Coleman might just put that in there. You know, that's one of those hands that's. It's good enough that if somebody does call you with something, you probably have enough equity that it doesn't really matter too much. 
as we see here, Ustamov is going to call, and, you know, Coleman's going to be, I mean, he's not obviously super thrilled that he's getting called, but when he sees that he's got two live cards, he's going to be fine about it. Sweet. Love that. <laughs> Coleman. Yeah, exactly. Coleman loves the fact that he is very much live here. Boost him off. 63% to double up again. If Ustamov wins this, he will be our new chip leader. And that's what happens when the stacks are this shallow. One all-in can completely change the event. All right, here's the flop. Nine, six, five. Not a whole lot of excitement there from Coleman as he's looking for a jack or a 10 or running cards to make it straight. Bonomo getting the bread, bread in the background as Ustamov looks to fade a bunch of cards. And that queen, <laughs> that queen gives like Ustamov a pair, but now Coleman with eight outs looking for a king or an eight to Never send <laughs> the Russian to the rail. River card is another queen, and Ustamov receives the double up. He now sitting on 1.58 million, and that makes him the chip leader. Yeah, second time now we've seen Coleman knocked out of the top spot on the leaderboard, but if history repeats itself, then. He'll be right back in first place pretty soon. That will change the dynamics a, a, a little bit here. You know, now it's Coleman and Ustamov essentially tied for the chip lead. All the other three players are on the shorter side. Becker being the shortest. Becker's on just under 12 big blinds. Mm -hmm. Been a good four hands for you. Yeah, <laughs> had freaking four bigs a second ago. I take it. <laughs> four bigs, chip lead. Switch gears. Time for me. You heard Coleman say it there. It's time for him to switch you gears. Yourself, and you said you love to see it. You double up with the oh. chip for it. Careful what you wish for. You can't be greedy and ask for like a pair. Becker here in the small flop. blind action folded to him. King six. All in. Oh, when he, he doubles to shove this, and he does. He said you love to see. Right when he doubled. Right, right, right. Yeah. Quick fold from mm -hmm. Bonimo. Yeah. That was gonna be a problem. valuable pickup there for Becker because he moves up ahead of Kalinin now. And Becker, of course, being in the small That's blind on that hand, is now on the real. button. Has a couple of free ones. Oh. <laughs> and boy. for Becker here. The one positive here is that for Coleman, it's not a small call to make, and Bonomo has basically the same amount of chips, so they would both require decent hands. He does decide to lay it down, however. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hate that fold. I mean, fours is just tricky. It, it might be right on the cusp of a hand you want to shove. Those small pairs are just 140. Yeah, it they can be pretty much garbage, even though Brent Hanks loves the deuces, you know. 
Coleman there picking it up with the ace queen. How much you think? No. One five exactly, including that. You look the same, right? You have more. Yeah. Close to one five. Folds here to Coleman in the small blind. Now it's just the two biggest stacks left to play, Coleman and Ustamov. Coleman limps with Jack 8 off, and Ustamov's got 5-3 off. I mean, Ustamov has, has shown to flop well, so let's see what this flop brings for him. I mean, at least he caught a 3. Uh, Coleman here flops a pair of jacks well in the lead. Given how the stack sizes are, Donnie, we had a three-way all-in to end it last night. We could have a four-way all-in to end it today. <laughs> we could. Why not, right? Coleman electing to check that pair of jacks, and Ustamov's going to come with a bet here, 50k, minimum bet. Bonimo, taking the taking the time to finish up those eggs. <laughs> Get your protein. I mean, what? listen, one of the perks yeah. playing inside the studio, free food free from from a wide variety of restaurants here at Aria, and a lot of really good options and some, some pretty good food. So. It's honestly a major draw for a lot of players. I mean, you have if, if you play here. We see Coleman here, check Coleman, turn two pair. But if you play here, you know regularly. I mean, if you're like let's say an Alex Foxen, I mean, how much thousands of dollars oh do you God. save in food? Jeremy Osmus, like you know, a ton, right? You eat one two meals a day here. I mean, it's a ton of money you're saving. Check, check here on the turn. Also, the beauty of that service is the fact that there's never any dinner breaks. Players just eat at the table when they feel like it. Given the health craze in poker, I'm sort of surprised that Bonimo is going for that toast with butter on it. It's one of those things where, like, you know, I'm the same way. You might not want to eat the toast, but then they put it on the plate and it's just there. You know what I mean? Like, it's there, and you're like... I gotta Repair. eat it, man. Yeah, like you love toast. That's like a, a baseline emotion is that everybody <laughs> loves toast. <laughs> well, you wouldn't specifically order it, but then when it's there, there's no avoiding it. His 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 butter his <coughs> butter placement could use some work. I'm really upset at the lack of butter on that south side corner <laughs> of his piece of toast. Take your poker game to the next level. Check out shop.pokergo.com. Our official merch available right now. We got No Gamble, No Future, High Stakes Poker, and Poker Go tees, hats, hoodies, everything you need to be comfortable at the poker table and to look the part. By the way, Donnie, I'm sporting the exclusive PGT Championship hat today. That, that that's a means, nice hat, huh? That means nothing to you guys who are listening to us because you can't <laughs> see us, but it is a very nice hat, very comfortable. Couple of kings here for Jeremy Becker. Taking a look around the table at the other stack sizes. Becker is under the gun. Bonomo's got queens. Wow. Justin Bonomo, fresh off of finishing his breakfast, ready to get back into the action. Here comes the collision. Oh, my God. 
disaster strikes for Bonomo. 235. And three bets to 235. Now let's see if anyone el anyone else wakes up with anything. King there from Usamov heading towards the muck. Could be important to note. These stacks are shallow and they're, they're according to our stat screen, they are tied in chips. So interesting showdown potentially here. Yeah, I would expect Becker just puts this in, bottom will calls, and we go and see five. All in. Becker moves all in. Bonomo makes the call, and we have kings versus queens here. Five-handed at the final table. And look at that. Both players. Oh, Bonomo felt really good turning his cards over and then saw the kings and, you know, big, big sigh there. I, mean, uh, I have 695. It's just a cooler. What are you going to do? Wow, same? <laughs> I think it's literally the exact same. <laughs> Someone gonna die. <laughs> no, we could chop it. Yeah. No. Get a nice little nine high straight on the board. <laughs> well, we want blood, sir. Exactly. Always rooting for blood. But hey, we've seen many hands come back from behind. Can Bonomo do there it? That's the question. Nine, six, three will eliminate those chop opportunities. A little bit of protection there with Becker having the club in his hand. There are two clubs on the flop. Turn card. Six of diamonds. Bonomo looking for a queen and a queen only to stay alive in this event. Jeremy Becker looking for his kings to hold up. River card. Nine of hearts. Like a count up. And that will do it for Justin Bonomo. Bonomo eliminated in fifth place. Takes home 16,500. Same stacks. Mm -hmm. David Coleman once again. Laddering up as far as the points go, extending game, his lead game. on the PGT leaderboard. Thanks. Bonomo's first cash of the 2024 PGT season gets him 33 PGT leaderboard points. Button moves. So he's on the board. Correct. Should see him hop right into that 10K finale for this series and battle out there. After that hand, it is David Coleman on top of the leaderboard. Becker moves into second place, sandwiched in between Coleman and Ustamov. But those three stacks are pretty close up at the top. And then it's Kalinin who's bringing up the rear here with just over 11 big blinds. He's got a king eight off in the small blind. He might elect to put this one in here against Jeremy Becker's big blind. Owen. There it is. Oh, wow, look at this. This is going to be a call. Yep, Becker finds ace-10 off and is going to make the call immediately here. Kalinin found two ladders, but this might be the end for him. Does have two live cards, so, you know, you're not in the worst shape here. About a two-to-one dog, but it's better than being dominated, that's for sure. Kalinin looking for some help here to stay in the hunt. Nikita Kalinin looking for a king or an eight. Queen, six, deuce, and he's the only Ooh. one holding a spade. So he Kalinin now spades? with 14 outs. <coughs> I like this one. Kalinin hoping to find a way to take this one down and stay in the, in the event. card. Queen of Diamonds. Doesn't change a thing. Still looking for a spade, a king, or an eight on the river. Stop. Sit. 
for Nikita Gunn and will <laughs> oh be our God. fourth place finisher. <laughs> He's doing the stand up. Is it going to work? It, it doesn't work. work. Good game. <laughs> Nikita Kalinin eliminated in third place. Jeremy He's Becker on quite a run here. First busting Bonomo with Kings versus Queens and now sending Kalinin to the rail. Becker is our chip leader with 2.1 million and we are three handed at this final table. Update here on the payouts as Kalinin takes you. home. $22,550. The final three are guaranteed $30,750. Second place, $49,000. And first, $73,800. By the way, if you're just tuning in, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Very much appreciate your engagement and undivided attention as we continue streaming day after day here from the studio. And Ustamov again with Ace-Queen. That is, I believe, the fifth Good time morning. he's picked up Ace-Queen at this final table. Or actually more with that. Right. Ten seconds. I'm searching. 130. You have like Ustamov 16, Ustamov raising right? up to 130. Me, I have a... Yeah. Actually folds around to Coleman in the big blind. 10-7 of clubs. Coleman's got 27 big blinds. Could see him potentially defend here to suited cards that are reasonab reasonably connected. Ace-7 jack on the flop. Coleman gets a piece of it, but Ustamov's piece is quite a bit bigger. No hearts for Ustamov. Likely see him continue here. 200. 100. That's 200K. 200, 200. Coleman, let's go of that seven, and Ustinov takes this one down. Stacks are all very close together now. Everyone could do a lot of damage to each other. Him off with a monster again. Still this time. guy is running so hot right now. Unfortunately for him, nothing to play with there for Coleman as Ustamov takes it down with tens. <coughs> Coleman now the short stack after being on top for quite a bit here. Only 28 hands into this final table so far, and we're already down to the final three. A 10K no limit, by the way. The final event of this series has kicked off in our main studio room. Big names already in action. Steven Chidwick, Daniel Negreanu, Kristen Foxen, Seth Davies. Uh, Bonomo has already hopped into the action. 
Alex Fox and David Peters, Eric Baldwin, Masashi Oya is back. Jeremy Osmus, Chino Reem. I mean, literally all the regulars are playing in that 135. Day, which we are streaming tomorrow. Live at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Coleman raising it up with Ace King. Becker with Ace Six in the big blind. Might we see some creative aggression here from Becker? That is the question. Becker reaching makes it 385. Of course, this perfectly sets up a shove for Coleman. taking his time, burning a time extension chip in the process. And there we see David Coleman in the reflection of Becker's glasses. Very on. cool perspective here. And he moves all in. Just want to have it. Fold. All right, Becker gave it a Wilson shot. Maybe best hand down. Let's it no. go. I wish I could throw it too. <coughs> What am I gonna do with Ace Queen? One extension. Oh. Have you had good hands both times or no? You know? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I wish I could say no. Ace three suited, it's a good hand, right? That is good. <laughs> No, I didn't. I had very good hands. <clears throat> I know I'm going to see it. He's going to have dust. Mm -mm. I wish. Let us know in the chat who you think Call. Call. is going to win this one. I gave you the extension, right? Yeah. Usamov has been running hot lately. Coleman has been making every final table imaginable. And Ustamov seemingly has been getting dealt the big cards. So who's going to be the favorite here is the question. I'd probably lean towards Coleman just because of his, you know, recent success. It's all very close, though, as we see ace-5-8 on the flop here. Sure. Nobody really connects with this flop. Becker, though, with the backdoor... Flush draw has a bit more going for him along with Jack High. Charger T asking about Justin Young. Have not seen him in the 10K yet. Uh, we do have live reporting available on pgt.com, so don't miss out on the action there. Ace pairs on the turn. Limth pot here, not a whole lot of action so far. Action gets checked to the river. Jack High is best here. Ten seconds. Three fifty. Three fifty. Good. Becker best 350 and gets it done. When are we doing a break? Uh, after 80k. 50 minutes. You gotta pee? Hmm? You gotta pee? No. 
I'm good. You got it? No. I'm good. I just want to take that one. Well, play continues three-handed here with three players virtually tied. 29, 28, and 27 big blinds, respectively. You pick one nine, Jeremy? Um, less. One seven. Okay. Just Play your cards. You got it. It's good. Just over. Thanks. Shouldn't do that when you're on the clock. My bad. Yeah, yeah shit. He's trying to cost me an extension. <laughs> Coleman with a monster here. Ace queen offset in the small blind. Let's see if he can get Ustam off the tangle. Coleman went for the passive approach, hoping to get some action from Ustamov, who decides to check behind with Queen 9 and check. nothing really out there on the flop. Play has turned a bit passive here. Check. Players, of course, being a little careful. Significant pay jumps as far as both cash and points on the line. Ten hits the river. Ace queen remains the best hand, but nothing in the middle here. Nothing to really fight over. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this go check check. Check. Ace queen. Ace queen is good, and Coleman takes this small pot down. Him off ace seven offsuit. Likely to see him attack Becker's big blind here. Stephen Walker says so short, no room to maneuver. I mean, it's 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 definitely there's definitely something to be said for the stacks being this close. Just want to basically be patient, wait for some good spots. No good need time. to rush into anything. By the way, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, do let us know where you're watching from. I'd love to see how. International, our crowd is yet again today. Becker with a playable queen, ten of hearts. I get 30 now, or is Becker going into the tank. All in? All in. 
Oh, there it is. Moves all in. Fights back, and Ustamov lets it go. Very nice aggressive move there from Becker, not wanting to play a flop, even though he was in position. Hey, Victor, do you mind just sliding that? Stop. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Charger T, watching from Finland, says it's negative 16 Celsius. God, it's so cold. It's so cold everywhere. Like, we're in Las Vegas. I might never move ev anywhere. Like, I feel like it's cold everywhere except for, you know, perhaps <laughs> Arizona, California, and Las Vegas. It's easy to get addicted to that nice, warm climate. And I don't mind. I don't mind the summer heat. Yeah, Netherlands in the house, New Zealand. Mito Man watching from Iraq. That's pretty cool that you're watching from all the way over there. We got Tennessee. We got Australia. Ustamov again with a raise, this time making it 120 with 9 6 of clubs. I guess I've forgotten about Florida as Josh chimes in, says it's a brisk 68 here in the Tampa area. Yeah, also a reliable place when it comes to warm weather. Uh, Belgium in the house, Orlando, Abu Dhabi. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, while you're at it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Turn on those post notifications. It'll keep you updated on everything that we have going on. Still three-handed here in event number four of the PGT kickoff. Ten seconds. One Ustamov keeps getting playable hands. This time it's ace nine offsuit in the small blind. Call. To avoid perhaps getting attacked by Becker, he decides to limp in. One ninety. Oh, and there it is, Becker raising it up to 190. Perhaps this is what Ustamov was looking for. Maybe he is trying to fight back with a 3-bet here. Last few hands have all been between Becker and Ustamov. All in. There it is, Ustamov does Pointer. fire back and move all in. A little bit of trickery, but you love to see it. Ustamov takes this one down. You beat Ace Jack? <laughs> At least say something believable. Come on. That's not believable? No. Oops. Raise 120. 
And look at this. A monster for Ustamov right after that shove onto Becker. Uh, yeah. Wow. Coleman does not know how lucky he is because running into Queens would have surely cost him a lot of chips. Tough sledding for Coleman as of late. He's just been seeing his track stack dwindle slowly. It's all very business-like, not a lot of chatter, not a lot of back and forth, just focusing on the cards. Coleman looking to play a cheap flop with, a, with an ace here, and Ustamov finds an ace of his own. Let's see if he's going to raise it up here. Queen eight queen on the flop. High likelihood of the pot being chopped, depending on the run out, of course. Ustamov bet 60k with ace high. Coleman comes along. Like I said, high likelihood of a chop in this hand, and that likelihood only got higher. Coleman needs seven. Ustamov needs a deuce, or else this hand will be chopped at showdown. Let's see if Ustamov decides to continue here. Action gets checked. Six on the river. If this gets shown down, it will be a chop. Question is, are these two players satisfied with going to showdown? Ace. Both players with an ace. They're going to show it down and chop it up. Come on, boys. Liven it up a little bit. We need some action. I want to see some action. Stacks are very close together. Uh, Stephen Walker in the chat says, just waiting hand. on a cooler right now. Setup coming within five minutes. Let's see. Ryan Davies says, it's negative 31 Fahrenheit in Edmonton. Y'all are soft. I will gladly be called <coughs> soft if that means that I get to live in a warm place. I lived in uh, Toronto, Canada for a few years, experienced my share of cold winds off the lake, similar to what they're experiencing in Buffalo right now during the football game, and it is not fun, let me tell you. It is brutal. Stacks, once again, as close as they can be. Oh. A big blind separating the players right now. And a walk here for Becker, who will gladly receive that one, holding a uh, four-deuce offsuit.
payouts for this event can be found in our video description. What's the score of the football game? The score is uh, 14 to nothing, but of course we are streaming on a delay, so the <laughs> players will not be helped by that. Buffalo winning so far. Boost them off. Let's see if he can win with Queen Jack. No score yet. Ten seconds. One twenty. Our uh, final three are Just guaranteed started. thirty thousand seven hundred dollars. Second is forty-nine thousand, and first is seventy-three thousand. Oh, wow. Sorry, at one thirty. I thought it was earlier. Coleman defending from the big blind with 7-5 offsuit. Check, check on the flop here, deuce 8-3, 6 on the turn gives Coleman an open and a straight draw, Ustamov still just looking at queen high. Ten seconds. One, one Coleman takes a stab with his straight draw and that's enough to take it down. The battle. It's probably the best TV all week, I think. All been close. I mean, it hasn't been any big pots, but. Anyone's game. Coleman is right. It is definitely <laughs> anyone's game right now. A very close match. But hey, we are like fans of the big all in. That's true, we are. But it was much shorter than this, though. 10 seconds. 135. I must say, there have not been many big hands dealt, which, which of course, it's also a big factor when it comes to seeing clashes in an event like this. And Becker is now at a point where 7-4 offsuit is a defendable hand. <coughs> Three, five, eight on the board. A five for Coleman. Gut shot here for Becker.
five hits on the turn. Becker's hand gets worse, but perhaps he's considering betting this as he's reaching for chips. 140. That's 140. Coleman now with trips. Becker bets 140. Coleman makes the call. Very happy, of course, having trips, hoping that Becker's going to keep bluffing at it. River card is the four of clubs. Becker now hits a pair. Perhaps showdown value will slow him down, but how often is that four really going to be good? That's the question he might be asking himself. Oh, Becker continues firing, bets 270. This spells trouble for him. Action on Coleman, who is probably thinking about raising here. Cannot imagine him just calling. burning some time here before deciding on his raise size. His 5.7, of course, very strong in this hand. Makes it 9.70. And Becker, with a quick glance back at his cards, Doesn't seem to be a believer. Ten seconds. Time extension. Time extension needed here for Becker as he seems to consider making the call here with the four. Seven, of course, blocks potential straights. I wonder how much that weighs into his decision making here. More time being taken here. Becker really doesn't seem to want to fold. Becker still got plenty of time to make up his mind, but unless he folds, it's going to be trouble for him. Calls himself a calling station. I'm going to pay. Oh, he's going to pay. He makes the call, and all of a sudden, we have a massive development at this final table. Coleman getting maximum value from his trips. Becker knocked down to just 465,000 <laughs> chips. That was a turn of events that I did not see coming, ladies and gentlemen. 970, right? David Coleman up to 3 million chips. As Jeremy Becker followed his gut, did not think that his opponent had anything on the river here. 
Mm. That misstep costly for Jeremy Becker, who is down to five big blinds. As you heard in the background there, blinds up to 4080. This is wrong. I was just big blind. No, no. I was just the button. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, uh. I was for sure. Sorry, it's 4080 now. Coleman standing up to get all these chips. Stacked and aligned. He must be feeling really good about his chances here. If you're new to our live streams, David Coleman has been on an absolute tear during our PGT kickoff. Winning event number one, finishing fifth in event number two, finishing second in event number three, All and in. now he is three-handed with the chip lead in event number four. So. Could see another win here. And Becker all in yeah. for 465 yeah. with Jack okay. six. And Coleman makes the call with pocket tens. <laughs> Jeremy Becker needs some help here to stay alive, or else he will be our third place finisher. David What's Coleman just unstoppable. <laughs> okay. Got a 465. Mm -mm. No, no, no. No, no, I have 460. I know. I don't put it out. Oh. Hasn't been working if I do. Uh, you're due. You probably got this one. You ain't got the break lately. No comment. All right, here comes the flop. Coleman That's looking right. to bring I'll this down to heads up play. Two, four, five, three clubs. No clubs in play. Becker adds a few outs here. Seven of club. Jack of clubs. Yeah. That's not fair. Jack or a three will give Becker the win. Turn card is the six of okay. spades. Even more. I'll take that. Or excuse me, same amount of outs here as the chop. Now also an option, so the three no longer good for the win. Becker looking for a jack or a six to double up. If not, Coleman will take another scalp. Yeah. The river Good is Thank the you. nine of hearts, and Jeremy Becker is eliminated. David Coleman takes another hand down and finds himself heads up against Viktor Ustamov from you see Russia. Each other Sorry, you want to move somewhere? I don't care. Yeah, I prefer to like break, look at each like, other a little bit. What's our break? Five minutes. I don't think they'll let us have a break. Okay. I don't care. I don't need one, but if he does, we it's fine. We are heads up here in event number four of the PGT yeah, kickoff. Cool. Quick summary like here of break, the payouts as Coleman <laughs> is so close to winning his second event in just a span of four events. Okay. So it's okay. just absolutely how insane short? how well this guy is doing. Um, Jeremy Becker takes home $30,750. The final two guaranteed forty nine thousand two hundred. Sorry, and the I winner will ultimately get seventy three thousand. I don't like having to look at him like that. So yeah, this is eight hundred. Yeah, thank you. Players just you three times? realigning their chips four. as four. they are getting Five ready eight. for heads up play. And look at this, face to face, Good as two. if we're watching high stakes <laughs> duel. I'm not bragging, just telling you. Coleman. Running so hot. Question is, is he going to close it out today? Finished second last night to Justin Young in that epic three way all in where he had his kings cracked by the eights of Young. Kristen Bicknell had, excuse me, Kristen Foxen had pocket queens on that same hand. First hand of heads up play. Here we go. Coleman, 8 6, offsuit, Ustamov. Ace nine. Oh. And immediately Ustamov starts with some aggression. Uh, by the way, we're playing 40k, 80k, so Ustamov has right, around 20 big blinds and Coleman up to 43 big blinds. <coughs> so 
<clears throat> if these guys are going to play it aggressively or if they're going to play it slow. We know from past events that slow play is fairly common with the big blind ante. Lots of incentive to limp on the button. Lots of incentive to see flops and, I mean, lots of incentive to raise here for Ustamov as he finds ace-king offsuit. Perfect situation for him to perhaps level the playing field here in this heads-up portion of the event. 160. Raise 160. He makes a 160, comes in for the min raise. King three off for Coleman. This is the thing, Coleman only has to call 80k to see a flop with 400k already in the middle. All in. Oh, he moves all in. And Ustamov, of course, is going to snap it off for 1.49 million. David Coleman going for blood and runs into ace king. Rolls could be reversed here immediately as Ustamov has the best hand. And this 2-1 to chip lead for Coleman could be reversed in favor of the Russian pro. Coleman has been running so hot. Is he just going to close it out here with king three? 22% chance, though. His diamond is dominated, but his three is live. And we've seen in the past that Coleman doesn't need a whole lot to find a win. Ustamov's tournament life on the line. Can we see a flop? Oh my god, there it is, in the middle. Coleman nodding. Ustamov <laughs> laughing. David he Coleman so simply flopped. unstoppable. Okay. He deserve it. Ustamov looking for an ace to stay alive in this event. If that doesn't At come, least do so flops. David Coleman will take this event down and win his second event here at the PGT kickoff. Four of diamonds on the turn gives Ustamov a few more outs. An ace or a deuce will secure a win for him. Coleman, his fourth straight final table. Is he going to close it out and get his second win? Yes, it yeah. is. Second win for David Coleman. Lucky, lucky. Absolutely he was, he was unbelievable. Yeah. What a start to the year. I mean, for the, flop, the yeah, tournament I grinder. <laughs> it is indeed the David Coleman show. Absolutely I incredible know. stuff from the man who any heads up, has made I don't know, I think, every I think I shot final I'm table sure. of good, our yeah. kickoff series. Some nicknames being thrown around. Mr. Kickoff, the Terminator, whatever you want to roll with. David Coleman deserves a big nickname. And here's a look at tomorrow's event. 5K, no limit hold'em. Excuse me, event 5, 10K, no limit hold'em. Streaming at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Dan Daniel Legrandu might be in the mix tomorrow, so you want to turn on those post notifications to see if he will be in the mix. It's been an awesome day of action here. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Rem Karinkama. Donnie Peters was alongside me. We'll be back tomorrow for the conclusion of the PGT kickoff. And the question, of course, can David Coleman do it again? We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks for watching.